Think back to February of this year. Honestly, I know it feels like 100 years ago. We all watched COVID's path from Asia to Southern Europe before flaring here on our shores in America. Here in Seattle, we felt the fear and bewilderment that came with being the first US hotspot. But what we went through was nothing compared to what cities like New York experienced. The whole world watched in sympathy and horror as cases exploded there. On March 1st, New York City confirmed its first case. By March 31st, total cases in the city passed 75,000. One week later, April 7th, nearly 600 people died in a single day. Emergency rooms and intensive care units overflowed. Doctors and nurses from across the country headed to New York to help relieve the strain. In the face of this exponential spread, city agencies stepped up with a secret weapon to help in the fight against COVID-19, to marshal the right resources, to flatten the curve and save lives. That secret weapon was data. To tell us more about this, we've asked Kelly Jin, the Chief Analytics Officer of New York City, to join us. Kelly was at the eye of the storm, helping to oversee the administration's use of data to respond quickly to the crisis. Kelly, first of all, thank you for joining me. Wow, I mean, it felt like the entire world's eyes were on New York this spring. It really did, uh, it really did, and it's a pleasure to be here with you, Adam, and uh, everyone for the conference. Excellent, well, it's, it's so exciting to have you here. What did it feel like when you and your teams were in the midst of this crisis? Uh, it, it really was uh, literally the, the eye of the storm for us. So we were at the Emergency Operations Center, which is right down the street from me here in Brooklyn 24-7 uh, toward the end of February and March. And our work was really assessing what are all of the different data sets that are available, what do we need to integrate, and what are the high-level questions that need to be answered. And for us, um, that meant turning around the clock to do the analyses and to deliver the insights uh, that executives and uh, policymakers needed at their fingertips. Uh, and I think for many of you who may be listening in from different jurisdictions, uh, that, was, that was true across the world. And uh, I know the response continues across many different jurisdictions, including New York City. Such critical work. Can you tell us a little bit more about why analytics was so important to the city's response? So we at the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics, when it's blue skies, our work, as I define analytics, is what is happening right now, why did it happen, and what's likely going to happen in the future, and what are we going to do about it? And so for us, we have a long tradition of working within emergencies here uh, in the city within my office. Uh, and it was very, very critical that we not only delivered, but that we partnered with many different city agencies, including the fire department, the emergency management department here, as well as Department of Health, but many, many others. And I think one of the most interesting use cases and stories that we saw in the springtime uh, for us here in New York City was around how do we assess the availability of ICU beds. Uh, of course, you can imagine that's a data integration effort across many, many different sources. And then actually use that data to derive where should we be sending uh, ambulances to. Uh, and I was very, very thrilled to have Tableau support and help. I used to work for US Chief Data Scientist at the White House, DJ Patel. And he oftentimes used this term of force accelerators. And I know the Tableau team, you certainly all were force accelerators uh, in springtime. For us, you came in, helped really to build out those data visualizations, whether that's regarding ICU beds or many, many other operational use cases to help us actually make better and faster decisions here in New York City. It's just amazing yeah. using data to tell ambulances where ICU beds are available. Incredible. So what did you and your teams learn about being ready for future crises? Well, it's all about understanding what data you have. So for us uh, during Blue Skies, um, and I recommend this for every organization out there, it is critical you understand all of your data assets uh, first and foremost. I know data cataloging may not be um, at the top of everyone's minds, but it was critically important to us through the COVID response to know what was out there, what was available, and what could we actually lean on to help make decisions. 
uh, using data. And uh, I think the second is I'll say that I really recommend that folks continue to invest in their analytics teams, in their data scientists. We are a small office of 10 here within uh, a very, very large ocean of New York City. And I know for many jurisdictions, those that had robust data teams, analytics teams, really were the ones that were able to get their arms around the response. And I think will be that much more uh, understanding around what the current and the future states will be around recovery as well. You've made it through so much, and now the city is also focused on recovery. What role is data playing in that effort? Data will still be integral around recovery, and I think for all of us keeping up with the news and current events, that will continue to be true. I think what was really pivotal for us early on, uh, even through response, was understanding how different uh, industries were doing. And so, Adam, you can imagine here in New York City wanting to understand how many restaurants are there in total? How are they all changing their hours? Um, and what is the impact to COVID more broadly? And that extends into the housing and real estate markets uh, and many, many other sectors as well. At the end of July, we were very fortunate. We launched uh, the New York City Recovery Data Partnership, which is an initial cohort of 11 different data partners. Some of the larger ones include Foursquare, uh, LinkedIn, as well as StreetEasy, which is Zillow Group's New York City brand. And for us, this is all about data sharing. So what data could we work with private sector companies on so that we're actually receiving more high-frequency, real-time data to inform our policy and decision-making? And I'm very, very excited to see uh, how this partnership continues to grow in the upcoming months uh, and in the year ahead.